Hey everyone, this is Russ from Retro Game Core. So today I'm going to show you a pretty neat trick you can use on a few different Nintendo DS games to allow you to play them using just the D-pads. You don't have to rely on the touchscreen, which is a really good solution for devices like the Retroid Pocket 2 or even the RG351, which will be coming out here soon, uh, in terms of that they can play DS games, but they don't do touchscreens very well. So we're going to try it out with uh, both of the, the Zelda games that are available for the Nintendo DS, as well as Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. So, uh, without any further ado, let me show you how this works. So the first thing you want to do is follow the link in the profile below, and you're going you're gonna to go to my website, and there's going to be these patch files. So download and unzip these files, put them on your desktop, and they're going to show up as four files each, the, the README and so on. So open those up, have them open available on your uh, Windows device, and then also you're going to need your Nintendo DS ROM. So these are the .NDS files that you use. I recommend renaming them to just the first word with a capital letter, so Phantom and spirit. So once you have those renamed, drag them into that folder and you know Phantom is for Phantom Hourglass, Spirit is for Spirit Tracks. You can close out of that now. So now you've got everything together which includes um, all of the files you downloaded from the zip file as well as your NDS ROM. So now go into the Windows Start menu, type in CMD to bring up the command prompt. And once you're in here, you may recognize this uh, from the old DOS days, we're going to direct it to look at the folder, and then we're going to execute a, a, a one-line code, and that's all we're going to do to be done. So go into your folder, uh, copy the path that's there above, and then you're going to type it in here. You're going to type CD space quotation mark, then paste in what you had copied, and then another quotation mark, and then hit enter. So now it's looking in that very folder, and that's the Phantom Hourglass folder that we're using right now. So go back over into the, um, the website again, and then there's one line of code here. And as long as you've named yours phantom.nds, you can just paste it in and it'll just work automatically. Let me explain how this works. So it's the exe file here, so it's telling it to run, and then it's saying look at the nds file using this uh, xdelta file, which is the, the actual patch, and then this is what you're going to name it afterwards, which is the same thing but with the word dpad. And that's it, and, and you can see up here it says phantom tac dpad, and that's the new file, and, and, and it's perfectly done now. So let's do it again with the other ones. We're going to copy the path, cd space quotation mark, paste it in, quotation mark again, hit enter. Okay, now we're looking in the Spirit Tracks folder. Same thing here, you know, we have it named spirit.nds, so you can scroll down a little bit more and you'll find that code, so just paste that code in there. And same thing here, it says use the execution file, spirit.nds, using the patch file, and then name it spirit dpadnds And once it's done, you can just hit enter. And there you go, you see how it just appeared? So now what I would do is rename them to whatever you want them to be to show up on your uh, device. So I'm just going to rename them to Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. And, and I'm adding a D-pad thing in there as well to remind me which one is which. And then this one, I'm going to just name it same thing, Legend of Zelda Spirit Tracks with the D-pad. Now you can take your original NDS file now and put it wherever else you want because that one hasn't really been touched. You now have two NDS files, the one that requires touchscreen and another one that doesn't. So as a bonus, Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow actually uses this same um, method as well. So uh, I've linked as well to another file, which is going to be inside of this ROM hacking website, which is where all of the nice DS and, and Game Boy Advance uh, patches are. And then you just hit the download button. And you'll download it, and it'll come up, and it'll only have two files this time. So you're going to have a text file and then that patch file, which means you need that other xdelta exe one. So you can pull that from Phantom Hourglass or from Spirit Tracks. It's the same file. Just pull it from one of those and put it into that folder. And then you're going to need your NDS, so pull that over as well. And here I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to rename it the word Sorrow, just to remind myself of what it is. Capital S, same thing here. Okay, and you probably guessed it. Next thing we want to do is get our command prompt open. So go in here, hit CMD, pull it up, and then resize the window. And because I'm OCD, I got to make it perfectly sized every time. Okay, same thing here. We're going to get that path, copy it, CD space quotation mark, paste it in, quotation mark, enter. And now we're back in that folder. And then you go back over, copy my code, which is the same code again. It just now says sorrow, and then paste that in and hit enter. You can see it's a sorrow NDS, use the patch file, change it to sorrow dpad.nes. Hit enter. 
and then wait a second, and there it is, sorrow.dpad. So let's try these games out and see how they work. Okay, so first off, let's go and try out uh, Phantom Hourglass. So start the game up. And there are still moments where you need to use the mouse cursor in these games. It's not a perfect patch. It's not everything has been fixed, but all of your movement has been fixed. And so that one plays really well in that sense. Like, so for example, here where it says touch the screen. Yeah, you need to go into mouse mo mode and touch the screen. And same thing here when you're like selecting your file, you're gonna need to be in mouse mode in order for it to work. But again, it's very kind of small uh, compared to the actual controls themselves. So let's try those out. Okay, so here we are with the game after 10 minutes of cutscenes, and you can see uh, it's playing well. I'm just using my D-pad to control right now, and like right here, if I want to talk to a guy, I just hit A button, and look, he says, "Oh yeah, tap on the, the tap on me," and that's how you talk to me. I didn't tap at all; I just used the A button, and so it's been patched over. It's the same exact game, but now you can use movement within it, so it's pretty neat. But anyway, it works. It's not perfect. So for example, right now, I'm trying to pull up that rock and I'm not really getting it perfectly. I found that you kind of just have to stop moving and then hit the button and then it'll usually work a lot better. And this here is Spirit Track. So this is the next game over. And same thing, you know, th these games are very similar when Link's on the ground here. Um, but let me show you, there's a train mechanic in this game, which is kind of like this puzzle slash action mechanic, which is kind of neat. So let me show you how this works. So this one, you actually need to use mouse mode because you got to pull these levers and the levers are not mapped to the D-pad as far as I could tell. So you want to get into mouse mode and you'll actually switch them over manually. And you can see here, I'm, I'm over here switching things over. Uh, it's, it's not that bad. The only issue is that you have to switch between the map. You want to toggle between the map and that you cannot do in mouse mode. So you have to switch over manually. So you get out of mouse mode and then hit whatever button you use to toggle the screen. This might be a good opportunity to try it with two screens at once on your device, depending on whether or not you like that. Okay, so let's try Castlevania now. Now this one actually has mostly all D-pad controls anyway, but there are certain times when you have to draw something. So for example, when you start a new game, it usually will have you come up and, and draw your signature. And this game won't do it, it'll patch through it so you don't have to do it. As well as when you are fighting bosses, you have to draw these runes on the touch screen. So they've eliminated that requirement out of the uh, game itself. So again, just an, an, a more simple, easier way to play through this game um, that really benefits uh, from not having a touch screen. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, be sure to leave a question uh, in the comments below if you have any questions. And uh, I'd love it if you liked and subscribed. But we'll see you next time. Happy gaming.